Welcome to the first video tutorial of Starship Corporation. In this video I'm going to show you how ship design works by building a small transport. Please keep in mind that this game is still in alpha and there will not only be a lot of bugs but there will also be a lot of changes in gameplay and the interface. That opens the opportunity for you to influence how the game develops, tell me if you have any ideas how to improve the game either by mail or in the forum. Ok, let's get started. At first I want to choose a construction contract. At the moment there is only one available, but in the final game there will be constantly new ones. I also want to enable players to create missions for other players, so that there will always be new challenges. Then I choose a suitable fuselage, also only one available at the moment. An engine that fits the required range. And we can start the project. The camera can be used the usual way, by moving the mouse to the edge of the screen or by using the arrow keys. In the lower left corner you can see the schematics of the ship's decks. You can change the deck by clicking on it with the left mouse button. You can also change the decks by using the page up and page down keys. In the upper right corner there is information about your design goals, the name of the client, the available budget, how much the fuselage costs, how much profit is remaining, and then the goals that need to be achieved like the ship's range and the needed fuel supply, cargo room, a minimum of energy supply if specified, the crew's needs of air and water supply, how many crew members of each profession are needed and if the crew limit is reached or exceeded. In the top left we have a drop down panel containing either a simple or a detailed view of all the error messages and completed objectives. If you always keep an eye on this you can easily finish even complex projects. And finally, in the bottom right corner, there is the construction menu with tabs for the six categories. If one category has several pages, you can switch pages using the arrows on the right or faster by using the mouse wheel. Every room has information about its energy use or supply, how much crew is needed for its operation and how much it costs. Okay. Let's begin. Most of the rooms are optional, however, every ship needs the core modules. Bridge, engine room and computer core. And you can also build only one of each. So, what I want to do now is to make this the lower deck with everything I need for the engine. I select the engine room. Selected rooms can be rotated at 90 degrees by pressing the right mouse button. If rooms can only be built in certain places, like in this case, you will see highlighted areas where you have to place the room. You place it with the left mouse button. You can also select a room by using the left mouse button to get more information about it. You can get rid of this selection and return to the construction menu simply by using the space key. If you don't like where you built a room, you can remove it with the right mouse button. These were the basics, nothing unusual I think. Well, now I will make sure that there is enough fuel for this cargo ship selecting the fuel tank. What I don't want to do here is to place the fuel tanks too close to the hull. One random hit or a collision and this thing explodes, so I want to avoid that, especially when I want to save money on armor. I put them in the center of the ship. Two, three and four. And this objective is complete. Good, then I will make sure that the crew is able to get there choosing corridors, a hatch, then a corridor segment. 
You can use the mouse wheel to quickly switch between rooms. Very helpful when you want to try out different sizes. Okay, as you can see, these corridors are not fixed yet. I will demonstrate why this is useful. At the moment I cannot place any hatches next to connections between segments. If you want to do this, you can lock these segments with the left mouse button. And now I can place the hatch anywhere I want. However, I cannot delete and replace single segments anymore, like I can do with these. All connected segments will be deleted together. Good, I will connect all the rooms with hatches now. Corridors are not essential to run a starship, but the crew can move much faster in them and this can be decisive. I also have to decide if all rooms are connected to each other or not. Of course, there's the financial aspect, but many hatches also create a lot of possibility for a hostile boarding team. Too few of them can limit or trap your own crew during emergencies. I need some generators now. All the rooms are still without energy. There's not enough space for a large generator room here, but a medium one will be sufficient, I think. You can set the power distribution of this generator by holding down the shift key and dragging the mouse with the right button pressed from the source to its target. The supplied room and its consumption is now in the list of the generator. If I don't want this room to be supplied anymore, I can simply remove it from this list by clicking with the left mouse button. Alright, the corridors still don't have energy. They get their energy collectively by building and connecting a power relay. Every deck has one power relay that distributes the energy from the connected generator to all segments, hatches and elevators on this deck. Okay, they have energy and we have still 83 left. Something I left out is that the decks need some kind of connection like a stairway or a lift. So I need to find a place for that. Very good that those corridors are not connected yet because I will place a lift there. When selecting a lift, I not only get informed if the location intersects with a room on this deck, but also if the lift has enough space above or below this one. For example, in this spot there is enough room on deck 1, but on deck 2 there is not enough room because the hull is much closer. By using the mouse wheel I can change if the lift builds upwards or downwards or if I want to extend a lift, but this doesn't apply here because this ship only has two decks. Alright, that's where the lift will be. On deck 2 we also have the lift now. Good, now I can connect the corridor segments. Deck 1 looks pretty good I think. Let's continue with deck 2 now. We need 600 kilotons of cargo room, that means two cargo units. As you can see, cargo units have to be placed with one side along the hull to be able to load them. Here at the front is a perfect place. One, two, design objective completed. I will connect these rooms to the lift now. Looks like we need an S segment here. Now it's time to find a good spot for the bridge. Placement of the bridge is delicate because once the bridge is captured or destroyed the ship is lost. So 
I don't want to place it too close to the hull and also not too close to rooms that are vulnerable to boarding. That doesn't work really good here because the cargo units with the outer hatches are a red carpet to any boarding party. But if I want to minimize this problem, uh, I can put more hatches between the cargo units and the bridge later. Now the computer core here. And I have all the essential core modules in place. Okay, as you can see, we need pilots and technicians. So let's begin to construct the crew quarters. I will place the pilots right next to the bridge here. A large one. There's a room for a smaller one here. Still one pilot is needed. I put a single cabin right here. A captain's cabin, I guess. A few hatches for connections to the bridge and a single access to the bridge. I definitely shouldn't connect the crew quarters to the cargo unit right here. That would be a huge security risk. It's very likely that boarding craft will dock here. Here is a choke point that I can defend pretty good, I think, if necessary. Maybe I have to put a little more hatches here later. Then I will get some energy in here. Hmm, we still need some space for air and water tanks. Here we have some room for an air tank. This applies to current crew for seven months but we don't have the whole crew yet. We only have the pilots, we still need technicians. I check if I can put them below deck, right next to the engine. Here, for example. Two are still missing. I need an additional small cabin somewhere in here. Now we have insufficient air supply, but there is still some room for another air tank. We have enough air now, we still need water. Oh, I forgot that I need a life support system that doesn't fit here anymore. I'm going to delete this one here and put the life support here instead. The generator at the stern. Not a very good place because the generators are also very sensitive, but I can provide a little bit of armor here later. We also need energy for the corridors on this deck. We can connect them now, I think. I cannot add any more appliances to this generator because all 10 slots are already occupied. Either I leave one room without energy or I build another generator. I think I want to add some more rooms to the stack anyway, so I will create a small generator. What else do we need? One medic? One technician has also been added to the ship's needs because of the small generator room I built before. I don't have to fulfill all the crew's needs by the numbers because I can also cover all the rooms with well-planned patrol routes. But 
it's a contract job and uh, as long as I'm within budget I'm happy. Alright, we have all the crew now, but there's still a problem. Uh, a corridor is not sealed. It isn't here, but on this deck there's an open corridor right here. I'm closing this by putting a corridor end piece right here. So, he's still complaining that there's not enough emergency escape vehicles, no galley and no sick bay. These have not explicitly been ordered by the contractor. It will have a bad effect on the crew's morale if I don't build them, but in this case I don't care about it. This isn't going to be my own ship and I don't want my profit to be beaten down. I am much more interested to build some uh, shield generators at the bow, because if there aren't any I will have a big problem in case of collision or asteroid hits. You can see that here are two fields free, but I cannot build two hatches directly next to each other. In this case I can use the double hatch. There isn't enough energy left to supply the shield generator. What I can do is leave those rooms connected, but turn them off. Of all the fuel tanks there only needs one to be active at once. Now there is maybe enough energy left. 38, but we need 60. Looks like we might need another generator room. Let's get rid of this. Now a small generator room. Then the technician's quarters and the air tank. Now we need some space for the power relay that doesn't fit in here. This has to go. So now there's enough energy for the shield generator. We need another place for the two technicians. Okay. Now I want another shield generator for deck 2. Oops, the budget has been exceeded. Looks like we have to cut down somewhere. I believe I have to get rid of the second generator. We have to do without somehow. There was almost enough energy for the shields anyway. I could save energy cost by removing some of the hatches. I might have a problem with access to the rooms in case of fire, but this has to work. Bad design can be counterbalanced by good crew management and vice versa. 
I need this energy now. So, now I have everything the ship needs for operation and I have almost 89,000 profit. Not very much, but it's a small ship. Theoretically, I could build some EVs now. There's no room on deck 2. Here there would be some space. But the budget doesn't allow it. Sorry, no lifeboats. Please don't forget to save the project regularly. The game isn't stable at all yet and if you've worked on your perfect battle cruiser with 5 decks and the game crashes, it might not be that funny. So please save your progress. I also provide a quick save and a quick load function using the S and L keys, but it still needs to be tested if this is reliable. I can equip the hull with armor plating now. In those spots I want to be extra protected. This is a question of cost of course, but armor in general is cheaper than shields, but Damaged armor has to be replaced while shields are always recharging. Alright, finally I can export this design for the use as a ship class and to train the crew and the AI with it. Everything is in order, those error messages were to be expected and I can ignore them. Done. How well my ship is performing now during standard operation and how good the crew can manage emergencies in this design you can see in the next tutorial featuring the basics of crew management. See ya! Objective.